Okay, in this lecture, I am going to talk about the pure rotational Raman spectra. Pure rotational rotational Raman spectra. Raman spectra. And in the last class, we were already going through the classical theory of Raman spectroscopy. And there we saw that we could see three <coughs> frequency components corresponding to the Stokes lines, Rayleigh scattering and also anti-Stokes lines. And there we saw that <coughs> the Raman spectrum is arising due to the change in the polarizability during the molecular vibration or rotation. And if you are considering the quantum theory of uh, Raman spectroscopy, uh, from the quantum theory we can understand this phenomenon of uh, Raman scattering like this. For example, in quantum theory, the light is considered as a stream of uh, photons. You suppose that one photon hits a molecule, a photon hits a molecule, and when this photon hits the molecule, there are different possibilities. The photon can hit the molecule and then it can scatter. It can scatter without the exchange of energy. Without exchange of energy. Okay. If this is the case, if the photon is scattering without the exchange of energy, then that leads to the rayless scattering really scattering okay so whatever may be the frequency or energy of the incoming photon with the same frequency it is getting scattered it means that if there is no exchange of energy between the photon and the molecule then such a collision between the photon and the molecule is called elastic collision elastic collision okay elastic collision so, elastic collisions leads to the Rayleigh scattering. And uh, sometimes this collision may not be elastic. The collision between the photon and the molecule can be um, inelastic in nature. Okay? In that case, there will be some exchange of energy between the photon and the molecule. Sometimes the photon can lose the energy and the molecule can gain the energy and in some situation the molecule will give extra energy to the incoming photon okay so these are the two situations where there is an inelastic collision in the case of inelastic collision so two situations arise here in the case of inelastic collision the molecule gain energy from the photon molecule gain energy from the photon and in the second case the molecule molecule loses energy to the photon okay so if it is the first case then the scattered photon will have less energy because some energy is gained by the molecule so if the uh, if the if nu is the frequency of the incoming photon okay then the frequency of the scattered photon nu s yes, the frequency of the scattered photon will be equal to the frequency of the incoming photon that is uh, nu exciting means this is an exciting line the molecule which is the, the 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 photon which is coming to the molecule okay that is nu exciting or it is the frequency of the ex exciting radiation um, minus okay from this one some some frequency from energy is uh, decreased and that energy corresponds to the energy gained by the molecule so let us write it like <coughs> delta e delta e uh, for example this all these frequencies are expressed in centimeter inverse okay so we can write nu bar here, nu bar here. So this is delta epsilon. And this delta epsilon corresponds to the energy gained by the molecule 
uh, in terms of centimeter inverse okay and if the molecule loses energy and in that case the photon will gain some energy so the frequency of the uh, the scattered photon nu bar s will be equal to nu bar exciting plus some energy is gained by the photon and that is delta e okay so this energy is gained by the photon or uh, uh, um, energy is lost by the photon or gained by the photon because of some internal effect and that effect is nothing but the vibrational excitation or rotational excitation okay so the molecule can be excited from a lower rotational level to a higher rotational level a lower a rotational level to a higher rotational level in that case what happens in order for this transition to happen from the lower rotational level to the higher rotational level in order for this transition to happen some amount en energy should be absorbed by the molecule or delta e should be absorbed by the molecule and from where this uh, extra energy will come and this energy will be taken from the incoming photon so incoming photon loses some energy equivalent to delta e and the molecule makes a rotational excitation or the molecule will make a transition from the lower rotational level to the higher rotational level and this is uh, the situation what we discussed here okay and in the other case the molecule which was already here in the lower upper rotational level will make a de excitation okay it will come down in this case it was come going up but in the second case the molecule which was already in the upper rotational level is coming back to the lower rotational level and in that process the extra energy delta i will be gained by the hitting photon the, the photon which is hitting this molecule will gain this energy and the scattered photon will have some extra energy delta i and that is the case which is happening here okay so you can imagine this like a, a, a bearing uh, ball uh, ball bearing hitting a drum okay you suppose that we have a uh, drum here we have uh, that this is the surface of the drum and the surface of the drum is vibrating right it can vibrate so when we hit this drum the drum will be vibrating like this so like this so you suppose that this molecule is hitting the drum when it was at rest okay the molecule was hitting the drum when when it was at rest and in that case the molecule the the, the ball bearing in this case it is ball bearing the ball bearing is hitting the drum when it, when it was at rest and then it will be reflected from here or it will bounce back from here okay and if the if the, the ball bearing is bouncing back from the surface of the drum without without spending much time here and probably it will it will it will be bounced back with the same energy it was coming here so ivide netra energy odu kudiyano the drum in the surface il vandu hit cheyade athrey energy odu kudi thanne aayirikum aa ball bounce cheyidu po okay that corresponds to the rayleigh scattering nammude case la rayleigh scattering corresponding aayittulla oru 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 analogy aanu ippo parnu oru similar situation aanu na mattoru situation il the molecule the ball bearing is hitting the drum okay and that drum is already vibrating already vibrate cheyidondikkina drum aanu appo ee drum idu mugalilekku ee oru position lekku varan samichondirikkumbodana nammude ball vannu ivide hit cheyina nadakil endayirikkum sambhavikkunnathu and the ball will give some extra push to the the to the ball bearing and the drum will give some extra push to the ball bearing le ee ball ee drum in the surface idinte higher amplitude like vibrate cheyina samayathana ee ball vannu hit cheyinundengil ee drum in the surface 
ഈ ബോളിലേക്ക് ഒരു എക്സ്ട്രാ എനർജി കൂടി സപ്ലൈ ചെയ്യും അപ്പോൾ ഇവിടെ നിന്ന് ബൗൺസ് ചെയ്യപ്പെടുന്ന ബോളിന് അത് എത്ര എനർജി കൂടി കൂടിയാണ് വരുന്നത് അതിനേക്കാൾ ഉയർന്ന എനർജിയിലായിരിക്കും അത് ബൗൺസ് ചെയ്യപ്പെടുന്നത് അല്ലേ സോ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബൗൺസ് ബാക്ക് വിത്ത് സം ഹയർ എനർജി ബട്ട് യു സപ്പോസ് ദാറ്റ് നൗ ദ ബോൾ ഈസ് ഹിറ്റിംഗ് സോ ദിസ് ദിസ് കറസ്പോണ്ട്സ് ടു ദ സെക്കൻഡ് സിറ്റുവേഷൻ റൈറ്റ് ദിസ് വൺ സി ദിസ് വൺ വാട്ട് ഐ സെറ്റ് നൗ സിറ്റ് കറസ്പോണ്ട്സ് ടു ദിസ് സിറ്റുവേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഗെറ്റിംഗ് സം എക്സ്ട്രാ എനർജി ആൻഡ് ഇൻ സം കേസ് the incoming ball may be coming and hitting this drum and that energy is utilized by the drum to go to the lower amplitude like ingotte ee drum inde surface ne push cheyan vendi aa energy ubhayikkya angane aanundengil then the ball bearing will be bouncing back with a little bit low energies because some energy is used for pushing the drum surface back and so the the ball bearing will be uh, reflecting with uh, some low energy that corresponds to the first situation that we discussed here okay so this is a quantum mechanical picture of how the molecule how the photon hits the molecule and what happens to the frequency of the molecule depending upon what happens to the molecule whether the molecule is making some excitation or de excitation the scattered photons uh, uh the frequency will be altered okay so now we are considering the rotational change happening in the molecule when the photon hits the molecule now let us uh, 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 analyze this more quantitatively because we already have the expressions for the rotational energy of the molecules we have already learned the rotational spectroscopy there we have already used the expressions for the rotational energy of the molecule so we can use those equations to quantitatively analyze this kinds of situation the situation where there is a molecular excitation from the lower rotation level to the higher rotational level and the reverse situation also a de excitation situation also so let us do that now we know that the rotational energy of a molecule that is depend upon that is depending upon the rotational quantum number j here i have used the notation epsilon in order to show that this energy is expressed in terms of centimeter in volts so epsilon j is equal to b j into j plus 1 minus d j square into g plus j plus 1 the whole square this is centimeter in volts you know that the first term is used if we are not considering the centrifugal uh, distortion or in the case when we are considering a rigid rotor only the first term is required but if you are considering the centrifugal distortion then the second term also should be included okay so in most of the cases the effect due to the centrifugal distortion can be neglected in the raman spectrum because the resolution of the raman spectrum in most cases is not enough to uh, to to the differentiate the effect of this centrifugal distortion therefore we can just uh, ignore the second term it doesn't mean that the molecule is rigid the molecule is still flexible or that there is a centrifugal distortion also but the term arising from the centrifugal distortion can be just neglected uh in our discussion that will make our case easier and also it is okay because uh, the effect due to this centrifugal distortion cannot be resolved with a high accuracy in the case of uh, raman spectro in most cases so that is why we are just neglecting it okay a very quantitative analysis should include this also but for a recent decent beginning or also for understanding how the raman spectro arises we can simply neglect this term that's all and here you know that b is a rotational constant j is a rotational quantum number whose values are 0 1 2 3 etc and therefore if you are neglecting the second term we can write e j or epsilon j is equal to b j into j plus 1 centimeter inverse and now we have to put the selection rule for the raman spectroscopy the selection rule is that delta j is equal to 
then plus 4 minus 2 okay these are the selection rules delta j is equal to 0 and delta j is equal to plus 4 minus 2 and that is different from the selection rule that we already learned for the pure rotation spectroscopy there the selection rule in the case of the pure rotation spectroscopy was delta j is equal to plus or minus 1 that we already learned and here the selection rule is different you have to understand one thing in the case of the pure rotational spectrum the spectrum arises because of the fact that during the rotation or during the rotational excitation there will be a change in the dipole moment okay the molecule should be a permanent dipole first and the rotation causes a change in the dipole moment and during the excitation also there should be a change in the dipole there is a change in the dipole moment and this change in dipole moment is the root cause for absorbing the microwave radiation and then it is resulting in the rotational spectrum and there the selection rule was delta j is equal to plus or minus 1 but here in the raman spectroscopy that is not the case here the case is that the molecular rotation should leads to should lead to the change in the polarizability of the molecule it is a completely different process okay unlike the rotation spectroscopy here the condition is that the rotation of the molecule should result in the change in polarizability therefore the selection rules are also different if the selection rule was delta j is equal to plus or minus 1 in the case of pure rotational spectroscopy that is not the case in the raman spectroscopy in the raman spectroscopy the selection rule is delta j is equal to 0 and plus or minus 2 okay and uh, if delta j is equal to 0 what does it implicate if delta j is equal to 0 it implicates that there is no rotational energy, rotational level change right D when the photon hits the molecule the rotational energy is not changing or molecule is not making a transition at all then only we can say that delta j is equal to zero and if the molecule is not making any rotational transition no energy will be absorbed by the molecule or no energy will be emitted by the molecule or the molecule neither gain the energy nor lose the energy so the incoming photon will be scattered with the same frequency and that corresponds to the Rayleigh scattering Rayleigh scattering now you know how the Rayleigh scattering is originating it is because of delta j is equal to zero transitions there is no rotational energy exchange okay no energy exchange for the rotation transition and this leads to the Rayleigh scattering so corresponding to that you will get a line in the same frequency of the incident photon and now there is another situation delta j is equal to plus or minus 2 delta j is equal to plus or minus 2 means it can make a transition from j double dash is equal to j to j dash is equal to j plus 1 j plus 2 okay here j double dash or j double prime represents the lower rotational level and j prime represents the higher rotational level and if the lower rotational level is j then it will make a transition to j plus tooth j plus second uh, rotational level j plus 2 okay means two rotational levels up then what will be the energy change corresponding to this rotational transition if the molecule is making a rotational transition from j to j plus 2 what will be the energy corresponding to that we can calculate the energy that is delta epsilon j is equal to okay v into j plus 2 into j plus 3 j plus 3 because this is energy bj into j plus 1 so if j is equal to j plus 2 then the energy is b into j plus 2 into j plus 3 minus b into j plus bj into j plus 1 centimeter inverse that is equal to b into 
j square plus 3j plus 2j plus 6 minus b into j square minus uh, so we can give plus here plus b into uh, j into j square that is equal to minus j square okay into minus j into 1 that is equal to minus j okay so that is equal to b is a common factor in both cases so we can write b into j square plus 3j plus 2j plus 6 minus j square minus j okay so j square plus j square and minus j square are cancelled then 3j plus 2j 5j 5j minus j is equal to 4j so we can write uh, 4j plus 6 so let us write that is equal to this is equal to delta delta e j is equal to b into 4j plus 6 4j plus 6 centimeter inverse so that is the energy difference when there is a transition corresponding to delta j is equal to plus or minus 2. So corresponding to different values of j, what are the possible values of j? j is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So different corresponding to different values of j, we will get a series of lines. And this series of lines is called S branch. Okay, S branch, S branch. And therefore, we can write delta or nu bar s, nu bar s. So, nu bar s, that is the frequency of the s branch or series of lines which are called s branch. That is equal to, nu bar is the frequency in centimeter inverse. So, nu bar s is equal to nu bar excite, ex, exciting means that is the frequency of the exciting line plus the frequency utilized for uh, utilized for the, the the rotational transition what is the frequency utilized for the rotational transition that is equal to delta e es okay so here we can see that the frequency used for the rotational transition is equal to uh, b into 4j plus 6 okay we can write so the equation can be written like nu bar s is equal to nu bar exciting uh, plus or minus b into 4j plus 6 why we have written plus or minus here so there are two situations there can be a molecular excitation that is from the lower rotational level to the higher rotational level, it is making a transition, upward transition. In that case, the energy absorbed is B into 4J plus 6, 4J plus 6, right? This is the level J and this is the level J plus 2. So, this energy is absorbed when this transition takes place, the upward transition takes place. So, some energy is absorbed by the molecule. So, so, the scattered radiation will have some less energy. And if this is the case, we have to use the minus sign. Means, in this case, nu bar S is equal to nu bar exciting minus B into 4J plus 6. And sometimes the situation can be reversed. The molecule is already in the excited level, that is in the J plus 2 level. Then the molecule is making a downward transition, okay. So that some extra energy is released. That extra energy's amount is B into 4J plus 6. This extra energy is gained by the incoming photon and the photon then will be reflected or it will be scattered with a F increased frequency that increased frequency is nu bar s is equal to nu bar exciting plus b into 4j plus 6 okay so these two situations arises so a series of lines 
corresponding to different values of j will appear in the lower frequency side of the new bar exciting okay so suppose that the new bar exciting is here this is the line corresponding to the new bar exciting this line will surely appear and that corresponds to delta j is equal to 0 there is no rotational transition then this line will appear okay and if there is a rotational transition then there are two situations one situation is th this one that is a molecule gains some energy and the scattered photon will have a less energy or the frequency of the scattered photon will be less than the frequency of the Rayleigh line like Rayleigh line they call frequency for a scatter in a photon in the frequency so where it will appear it will appear in the left side of the Rayleigh line right or the low frequency side of the Rayleigh line so the low frequency side is here so a series of lines will appear here like this you can see a series of lines like this see one line here another line here another line here and here here like this okay and these series of lines are obtained because of different values of j and what are the possible values of j 0 1 2 3 etc and then you will get another series of lines in the upper frequency side that corresponds to the situation where the molecule is de-excited okay and then corresponding to that you will get a series of lines like this like this a series of lines and that will be the mirror image of this one whatever is the whatever is in the left side and its mirror image will come in the right side also so you will get a spectrum like this and now we can see the position of the spectrum by giving different spectrum, position of the spectral lines by giving different values of j then we will understand the the fine features of the spectrum so here is one frequency in the middle and that frequency is the most intense frequency okay this one and that corresponds to the Rayleigh scattering and here the frequency is less and that frequency corresponds to this situation okay and this series is called Stokes lines Stokes lines number in the class number classical theory but it's a under the Stokes lines they have the frequency less than the frequency of the incident photon and there is a series of lines in the right side and that has higher frequency than the Rayleigh line and this is called a anti stokes lines anti stokes lines so the stokes lines and the anti stokes lines are arising because of the rotational transition but she is the rotational spectrum allah the rotational spectrum on the angle number of microwave energy you would apply you know that microwave energy is utilized for the rotational transition but we are supplying a higher energy normally higher energy okay and a part of that energy is utilized for the rotational transitions and here actually we are examining the scattered light technique different under the microwave spectroscopy uh, e molecule ne radiate you know and the frequencies absorb you in the open absorb the frequency corresponding at the lines are not going to get another say but I'm going to get the lines in the frequency other the molecular transition when they absorb the frequency and see this is the frequency Delta ES that is the frequency absorbed by the molecule for making a rotor molecular transition but the frequency that we are observing in the spectrum is this one either the number of the frequency is what the number of sector is on the frequency in the new bar is other number of spectacle kind of frequency other rotational transition the frequency and rotational transition the frequency that is on Delta ESR that corresponds to B into 4 J plus 6 but if the new bar is in the particular rotational transition of frequency at the end of the day and the body under the person minus on and then the good day I'm ready 
എക്സൈറ്റിംഗ് ലൈൻ്റെ ഫ്രീക്വൻസി കൂടി ആഡ് ചെയ്യപ്പെടുന്നു അല്ലേ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എക്സൈറ്റിംഗ് ലൈൻ്റെ ഫ്രീക്വൻസിയോട് കൂടി റൊട്ടേഷണൽ ഫ്രീക്വൻസി റൊട്ടേഷണൽ ചേഞ്ചിൻ്റെ ഫ്രീക്വൻസി ആഡ് ചെയ്യപ്പെടുന്നു അല്ലെങ്കിൽ സബ്സ്ട്രാക്ട് ചെയ്യപ്പെടുന്നു അപ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ ന്യൂ ബാർ എക്സ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് റൊട്ടേഷണൽ ചേഞ്ചിൻ്റെ ഫ്രീക്വൻസി അല്ല നമ്മൾ സ്പെക്ട്രത്തിൽ കാണുന്നത് ഇത് വളരെ പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ടതാണ് അത് കാര്യം മറന്നു പോകരുത് ഇവിടെ ഈ റൊട്ടേഷണൽ സ്പെക്ട്രം പോലെ തന്നെയാണ് ഇത് അപ്പിയർ ചെയ്യുന്നതെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിലും ഫ്രീക്വൻസി റേഞ്ചിൽ വ്യത്യാസമുണ്ട് ആ ഫ്രീക്വൻസി റേഞ്ചിലുള്ള വ്യത്യാസത്തിൻ്റെ കാരണം ഇവിടുത്തെ ആഡ് ചെയ്യപ്പെടുന്ന എക്സ് ഫ്രീക്വൻ ഒരു ടേം കൂടിയുണ്ട് ന്യൂ ബാർ എക്സൈറ്റിംഗ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു ആഡ് ചെയ്യപ്പെടുന്ന ടേം കൂടിയുണ്ട് അതിൻ്റെ കമ്പൈൻഡ് ഫ്രീക്വൻസി ആയിരിക്കും നമുക്ക് ഇവിടെ കാണാൻ സാധിക്കുന്നത് ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ് മേ നോട്ട് ബി ദാറ്റ് വിൽ നോട്ട് ബി കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് ടു ദ റൊട്ടേഷണൽ ദ ഫ്രീക്വൻസി കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് ടു ദ റൊട്ടേഷണൽ ചേഞ്ച് അതുകൊണ്ട് രണ്ടിൻ്റെ ടെക്നിക്ക് രണ്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ ഒബ്സർവ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഫ്രീക്വൻസീസും രണ്ടായിരിക്കും ഓക്കെ അപ്പോൾ ഇങ്ങനെയാണ് രാമൻ സ്പെക്ട്രം ഒറിജിനേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇനി നമുക്ക് പല ജെ വാല്യൂസ് ഒന്ന് പരിശോധിച്ച് നോക്കാം ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ജെ വാല്യൂസ് കൊടുക്കുമ്പോൾ ഈ ഇക്വേഷൻ എന്ത് ചേഞ്ച് ആണ് ഉണ്ടാകുന്നത് നമുക്ക് നോക്കാം ഓക്കെ സോ ലെറ്റ് എസ് കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ഫോർ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ജെ വാല്യൂസ് ബി വിൽ കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ദ വാല്യൂ ഓഫ് ബി ഇൻറ്റു ഫോർ ജെ പ്ലസ് സിക്സ് ബി ഇൻറ്റു ഫോർ ജെ പ്ലസ് സിക്സ് വാല്യൂസ് കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് ടു ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ജെ വാല്യൂസ് സോ വൻ ജെ ഇസ് ഇക്കൽ ടു സീറോ ദാറ്റ് കറസ്പോണ്ട്സ് ടു സിക്സ് ബി റൈറ്റ് സിക്സ് ബി വൻ ജെ ഇസ് ഇക്കൽ ടു വൺ ദാറ്റ് കറസ്പോണ്ട്സ് ടു ടെൻ ബി and when j is equal to 2 that corresponds to 14b and when j is equal to 3 that corresponds to uh, 18b so the first line will appear first line in any series okay that will appear for example if you are considering the stocks lines stocks line aanu nammal consider cheyyunnundengil and the frequency koravana railway line ekkal the stokes line the frequency engena irikum appear irunnathu if the frequency of the railway line is new bar exciting excite uh, new bar exciting then the frequency that we are observing in the stokes line series okay that is stokes series lines in the sub, uh, frequency nu parayunnathu new bar exciting minus 6b okay nu parayna railway line the left line 6b um kuda kuraniya oru frequency aanu aadhi theriyum the new bar exciting minus 10b new bar exciting minus 14b and new bar exciting minus 18b okay so you will see a series of lines like this in the left side so we have the spectrum here so this series this frequency is if this is new bar exciting then this frequency is new bar exciting minus 6b this is minus 10b or minus 14b minus 18b like that okay so you will get a series of lines in the stokes line in this way now from the railway line to the first line in the stokes series the difference is 6b le aadithe difference ennu parayana railway line il ninnum ivide vareyulla railway line nu parayunja new bar xit plus or minus zero nu parayana pore le ഇത് തമ്മിലുള്ള ഡിഫറൻസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സിക്സ് ബി ആണ് അപ്പം റെയിലേ ലൈനിൽ നിന്നും ഇവിടെ നിന്ന് ഇതാണ് റെയിലേ ലൈൻ അതിൽ നിന്നും ആദ്യത്തെ സ്റ്റോക്സ് ലൈനിലെ ആദ്യത്തെ ഫ്രീക്വൻസി വരെയുള്ള ഡിഫറൻസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സിക്സ് ബി ആണ് സോ വാട്ട് ഈസ് ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഫ്രം ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ലൈൻ ഇൻ ദ സ്റ്റോക്ക് സീരീസ് ടു ദ സെക്കൻഡ് ലൈൻ ഇൻ ദ സ്റ്റോക്ക് സീരീസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് സിക്സ് ബി ടു ടെൻ ബി ഡിഫറൻസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഓൺലി ഫോർ ബി ദെൻ ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഈസ് ആൾസോ ഫോർ ബി this difference is also 4b so from here we can see that the stokes line will appear in such a way that the first line will appear at a distance of uh, 6b so this distance will be 6b but the next distances e distance e distance ellam equally separate aanu e distances ellam etra aanu 4b distances illa for the distance okay ഇനി ആൻറ്റി സ്റ്റോക്സ് ലൈൻസിൻ്റെ കേസിലും അതേ ആർഗ്യുമെൻറ്റ്സ് നമുക്ക് പറയാവുന്നതാണ് സോ ഇൻ ദ കേസ് ഓഫ് ആൻറ്റി സ്റ്റോക്സ് ലൈൻസ് ആൻറ്റി സ്റ്റോക്സ് ലൈൻസ് ഇൻ ദ കേസ് ഓഫ് ആൻറ്റി സ്റ്റോക്സ് ലൈൻസ് ദെൻ ദർ ഇസ് ഈഫ് ദ ഫ്രീക്വൻസി ഓഫ് ദ റെയിലേ ലൈൻ ഈസ് ന്യൂ ബാർ എക്സൈറ്റിംഗ് ദ ആൻറ്റി സ്റ്റോക്സ് ലൈൻസ് വിൽ അപ്പിയർ ലൈക്ക് 
mu bar x i think plus the plus d into 4j plus 6 let mu bar x i think plus plus b into 4j plus 6 I'm only going to so we have j values in when the equation construct here we have all the new bar s values here so we have new bar s values here we have so new bar x i think plus 6b 6b that is the first value then new bar x i think plus 10b new bar x i think plus 14b new bar x i think plus 18b etc so the first difference from the Rayleigh line to the first line in the stock series and the stock series that is equal to 6b then all other differences are 4b so if you are looking into the spectrum this line okay this line the, the difference between the Rayleigh line and this line the first line in the anti stokes line and that difference is uh, 6b all other differences are 4b okay then they are equally spaced at the 4b distances so this is how we can see the rotational raman spectrum rotational raman spectrum in the spectrum, the intensity is the same. In the intensity, in the case, we have stocks lines and anti stocks lines. We have stocks lines appear due to the excitation of the molecule from low uh, rotation level to the higher rotation level, and the anti stocks line is due to the de excitation from higher rotation level to the lower rotation level. So, here and the case laying frequency in the brain of the aggregation would be bole. Alpha frequency good of the lip, where alpha frequency good of the lip, stocks lay in salarium. And again, lower frequency range will come up from the stocks lay in salarium. Higher frequency range will come up from the anti stocks lay in salarium. Alpha frequency good of a shape. Here and the frequency will compare the aggregation would be bole. Aggregation would be bole among the carnum and the quality area. Now, pala rotation levels and higher rotational levels are well populated on. We rotational spectroscopy in the same way, rotational levels in the population number And we had given, uh, we had already done a problem where we considered B is equal to 2 cm inverse and the temperature is equal to 300 Kelvin. This is a problem. In this case, we have uh, the, the population in the first level divided by population in the j is equal to 0 level n1 by n0 it was almost equal to 0 0.98 now when you know 98 percentage population j is equal to 1 rotation level j is equal to 0 rotation level le molecules in the population at the end of the 98 percentage and then the end of the j is equal to 1 state level. but j is equal to 2 state level like a number of alpha and population for a young mother and now comparably the excited rotational levels are also well populated. And when well populated, I wonder if there is a de excitation de, uh, intensity, de excitation of um, de excitation molem dana photons in the intensity. The regime, uh, egg the same excitation molem dana uh, lines in the intensity to the mind. When excitation the mother of Madagano, egg the same okay, a train than a de excitation some boy. That is the stokes lines and anti stokes lines and intensity. This is the intensity intensity anti stokes lines. Upper rotation levels are not well populated as in the case of lower rotation levels. So, de excitation, the number of de excitation will be, as, will be slightly less than the number of excitation. Okay, now we have a equally populated series of lines on the rotational diamond spectroscopy. We have a pattern of the rotational spectroscopy. We have a intensity of the pattern. The same pattern is followed here. And you know that this pattern is followed by different factors. One is the probability of transition. Okay, probability of transition. Probability probability of transition or quantum mechanical probability of transition second is the the population of energy levels population of energy levels and the third factor is the uh, 
degeneracy degeneracy okay so these points we already discussed in detail in the rotational spectroscopy so i am not going to repeat this you already know this appo ee pala pala factors inde adisthanathilana namak idu pole or intensity pattern namak kittunnu rotational spectroscopy ede case namu padichathana same arguments are valid here also okay so ithrayum കാര്യങ്ങൾ ആണ് നമുക്ക് ഈ റൊട്ടേഷൻ സ്പെക്ട്രോസ്കോപ്പി എങ്ങനെയാണ് റേസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് റൊട്ടേഷൻ രാമൻ സ്പെക്ട്രം എങ്ങനെയാണ് റേസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് എന്നുള്ളത് നമുക്ക് നോക്കാനുള്ളത് നോ അനദർ തിങ് വി ഹാവ് ടു കൺസിഡർ ലെറ്റ് എസ് കൺസിഡർ സം മോളിക്യൂൾസ് ലൈക്ക് ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഓക്സിജൻ ഓർ ഹൈഡ്രജൻ ഓക്കെ ദീസ് ആർ ഹോമോ ന്യൂക്ലിയർ ഡയറ്റമിക് മോളിക്യൂൾസ് വിൽ ദ ഗീവ് റൊട്ടേഷൻ സ്പെക്ട്രം the microwave spectrum thermo e molecules illa because in the case of the rotational spectrum the condition was that the molecule should, should possess a permanent dipole moment the homonuclear diatomic molecule they do not possess a permanent dipole moment so you cannot expect the rotational spectrum in the case of oxygen or hydrogen so no rotational spectrum no rotational spectrum will see in this case no rotation spectrum right new is the vibration spectrum there no these are diatomic molecules so the only one mode of vibration is the stretching mode the diat homo nuclear diatomic molecule will never accompany with a dipole moment change during the stretching mode so if you are uh, trying to get an infrared spectrum infrared spectrum that will also will not uh, give you infrared spectrum so you will not get any parameter useful parameter from this one okay in the infrared spectrum we can run cheyanu but the thing is that we can run the raman spectrum of these molecules this homo nuclear diatomic molecule will give raman spectrum that they give raman spectrum because the raman spectrum depends upon the change in polarizability so this diatomic a homo nuclear diatomic molecule will lead to the change in polarizability during the rotation or vibration okay so these molecules can give the raman spectrum they give raman spectrum raman spectrum ki e raman spectrum get kanyal nammal pure rotation rotation raman spectrum aanu nammal ഇവിടെ റെക്കോർഡ് ചെയ്യുന്ന വിചാരിക്കുക അങ്ങനെയാണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് എന്ത് കിട്ടും ഇവിടെ നിന്ന് ബി എന്ന് പറയുന്ന പരാമീറ്റർ വന്നു കിട്ടും അല്ലേ റൊട്ടേഷൻ കോൺസ്റ്റന്റ് ബി ക്യാൻ ബി ഒപ്റ്റൈൻ ഫ്രം ഹിയർ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എ വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് പരാമീറ്റർ ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദ ബോണ്ട് ലെങ്ത് ഇൻ ദിസ് മോളിക്യൂൾ ദ ബി ഇസ് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് പരാമീറ്റർ അല്ലേ അപ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് ഓക്സിജൻ ഹൈഡ്രജൻ ഇതുപോലെയുള്ള മോളിക്യൂൾ ഡയാറ്റമിക് മോളിക്യൂൾസിന് റൊട്ടേഷൻ സ്പെക്ട്രോസ്കോപ്പി നമുക്ക് സ്റ്റഡി ചെയ്യാൻ ഒക്കില്ല എങ്കിൽ കൂടിയും രാമൻ സ്പെക്ട്രോസ്കോപ്പി സ്റ്റഡി ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ട് അവരുടെ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് പരാമീറ്റേഴ്സും അതുപോലെ മോളിക്കുലർ ഡയമെൻഷൻസ് ഒക്കെ മെഷർ ചെയ്യാൻ നമുക്ക് ഈ സ്പെക്ട്രോസ്കോപ്പി ടെക്നിക്ക് മൂലം നോക്കും വി ക്യാൻ സേ ദാറ്റ് രാമൻ സ്പെക്ട്രോസ്കോപ്പി ഈസ് കോംപ്ലിമെൻ്ററി ടു ദ മൈക്രോവേവ് സ്പെക്ട്രോസ്കോപ്പി മൈക്രോവേവ് ഓർ ഐ ആർ സ്റ്റഡീസ് ഓക്കെ രാമൻ സ്പെക്ട്രോസ്കോപ്പി ഈസ് എ കോംപ്ലിമെൻ്ററി ടെക്നിക് ടു ദ മൈക്രോവേവ് ആൻഡ് ഐ ആർ സ്റ്റഡീസ് വൈ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കോംപ്ലിമെൻ്ററി ദിസ് ഈസ് ബിക്കോസ് ദ ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ ദാറ്റ് വി കനോട്ട് ഒപ്റ്റെയിൻ ഫ്രം ദ റൊട്ടേഷൻ സ്പെക്ട്രം ഓർ രാമൻ റൊട്ടേഷൻ സ്പെക്ട്രം ഓർ ഐ ആർ സ്പെക്ട്രം can be harvested from the raman spectrum so raman spectrum is a complementary technique to the microwave spectroscopy and ir spectroscopy so this is very important uh, uh, spectroscopy technique and uh, we indians can be proud of it it was invented by professor c v raman who was an indian and uh, he got nobel prize for this uh, discovery or for this invention okay and uh, that's all for this lecture and uh, i hope you understood everything if you have any doubt please please don't hesitate to ask me thank you for watching and stay tuned